And good evening. Good to be with you. I'm Don Hudson. Welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the big seven stories right now and topping that list, helping those who help others. Here at WATE, we partner with Operation Honor Guard every year for the annual donation drive. The organization helps facilitate military funeral honors to any honorably discharged veteran. Now one of the Operation Honor Guards is asking for help. This after it's a fi uh, their fire was destroyed, their home was destroyed by fire, excuse me. Nancy and Jack McEnany are veterans and have helped protect our country. Now they need all of our help. Jack is in the Air Force. He's a veteran there. Nancy, a Vietnam War veteran and a volunteer with the Honor Guard. Their home caught fire last Friday after some type of electrical issue. It destroyed the garage and it moved from the garage through half of the house through the attic. He got up to go see what was going on. I went back to read and I heard some wonderful neighbors. Can I give them a plug? Kay and <laughs> Kayla and Kyle Perkins, they were awesome. He's beating on the door saying, get out, get out, your house is on fire. I stepped outside, saw the roof was on fire behind me. Now, their home and nearly everything inside of it was basically destroyed by the fire. Their family has set up a GoFundMe to help them rebuild and buy needed items. They say so far they have been overwhelmed with the community's support. Now, if you would actually like to help out, we have a link on our website. It's a GoFundMe link. Just go to WATE.com and find more information. All right, next on our list, a Knoxville man convicted of killing his wife in front of their children. This happened back in January of 2021. And he's now been sentenced. The district attorney's office says 30 year old Horace Nunez has been sentenced to life without parole. He was convicted of first degree murder and four counts of reckless endangerment in that case. Police say the shooting happened in a parking lot of an apartment complex on Summit Drive. Witnesses told police that Nunez shot his wife after an argument and did so in front of the four children. Nunez actually took three of those kids to his mother's home and then he took off to Kentucky. He was later arrested by Kentucky police after a chase. In our next Big 7 story, we are learning about new developments surrounding the Megan Boswell case. Now, defense attorney Brad Sproles will no longer be representing Boswell, who's charged with murder and the death of her young daughter. After filing a motion in court earlier this week, stating that the client counsel relationship had deteriorated to really the point that he can't effectively represent his client. I've always felt that the rules of professional responsibility require that when an attorney gets to the point where they can't be effective, it's our responsibility to bring that to the court's attention. Gene Scott has been named Megan Boswell's new lawyer, but he says he has quite a bit of catching up to do to grant Scott more time. The district attorney general, Barry Stavis, suggested the court change a December venue and change those motions and also have a hearing status. It's going to take a, a long while. From what I understand, the discovery in the case is voluminous. Um, I have talked to Ms. Boswell one time, um, but to say that we will be ready to do anything by December 14th, I don't think that's realistic. Um, it'll, it'll take months to get caught up. Sprawls has says that he has said he will work with Scott to transfer over all the discovery. Both the prosecution and defense say this will delay the case going to trial in February as planned, so it'll be sometime later than that. All right, continuing our Big 7 coverage, a UT football player recently accused of assault has been cleared by UT's Office of Student Conduct and Community Standards. you likely remember back in October on the 9th, a man claimed that Jalen McAuliffe punched him and knocked him down the stairs of an apartment complex. Well, that man also admitted to drinking with friends and accidentally entering the wrong unit, which happened to be McAuliffe's. Officers' reports say that McAuliffe's right hand had bandages on it when he returned to the complex, and then he was taken into custody. Now, throughout the entire investigation, McAuliffe's attorney, Chloe Akers, has told us that he claims he's innocent and has been cooperating with Knoxville Police and the university. Now we're learning UT's investigation into the allegations has actually wrapped up. McAuliffe's attorney says that part of an alternative resolution agreement as part of it, there was no finding of responsibility against McAuliffe for any violations of the university's code of conduct. Now, it goes on to say uh, he is still fully enrolled as a student without suspension, without any probation. Despite all of that with the school, McAuliffe has a preliminary hearing in county court next month on those aggravated assault charges. The university has not announced if he will be allowed to play in the coming weeks. 
Next on our list, sometimes football, you know, it's really more than just about the game that actually happens on the field. Vol fans from all over are stepping up to help a UT Martin offensive lineman and his family after they lost their home in Hurricane Ian. Now, that's A.J. Marquez. He's originally from Port Charlotte, Florida. While he is gearing up for tomorrow's game, his family's still picking up the pieces down in Florida. He decided to start a GoFundMe for them not long ago. He had raised a few thousand dollars, and then Vols heard about it and really stepped up to help. So far, more than $67,000 has been raised for the family. If you would like to help this young man and his family, we have a link for you to donate. It is in this story. Just go to our website, WATE.com. Right, and our next Big 7 story, it is a big weekend for the balls. It's homecoming. You probably know that by now. A time that Two Vols for Life say is centered around tradition and the history at UT. You know, homecoming spotlights a line of traditions from the parade to the ball walk to the game itself. A time that orange and white is proudly worn amongst generation of Vols. Now, Vol for Life, Chavis Smith says homecoming is more than what you see down on the football field. What's excited about homecoming for me specifically is you get to relive those moments. Everybody's gonna come back and get to see friends and ex teammates and classmates and people we ran around the, the, the campus with and just have a good time. Have a good time. The Power T is the mighty icon in the SEC. You know, know what that means. You've got hundreds of years of volunteers that are before you, there'll be hundreds of years of volunteers that'll be after you. But when looking back at homecomings in the past and comparing them to successful, the successful season the balls have had so far, it makes coming together this year all the more special for the for ball fans, especially coming off a win against Alabama. Now, Sterl the Pearl says he is proud of what the balls have been able to do so far this season and hopes their success will continue. All right, if you are going to be a part of the tradition tomorrow, here is the game schedule, or I should say the homecoming game schedule for that day. Ball walk begins at 9.45. You see at the top of the screen. Then there's the gates of the stadium opening up at 10. The pride of the Southland Band steps off at 10.20. And the kickoff follows at noon. We're told there are still a few tickets left. You can find them by going to the website allballs.com. If you're not going to the game, you can just sit back and relax at your house and watch it on the SEC Network. And these uniforms, these are the uniforms, I should say, that UT Vols will be wearing for tomorrow. Note the orange pants paired with the summit blue sleeves. But one of the biggest events will be Smokey 10 retiring during the tomorrow's game. This year, or during the season, I should say. This year's homecoming theme is to salute Smokey. Smokey 10 made his debut in 2013. He actually was the, the mascot when he saw the blue tick coon, uh, coon hound become the official dog, official breed of dog, I should say, for the state of Tennessee. That happened back in 2019. He will be succeeded by his one year old son, Smokey 11, who remains in training right now. And rounding out the Big Seven, the Knoxville Ice Bears are just minutes away from their 21st season opener. After 187 long days, Ice Bear fans are once again making their way to the Knoxville Civic Coliseum. I'm assuming all of them are already headed there. The Ice Bears are coming off a heartbreaking end of last season and are coming back, they say, with a vengeance. The squad went 42-10, 2-2, securing 88 points in regular season, taking home the regular season championship last year. Knoxville ultimately lost to Roanoke, you know, in the first round of the playoffs in the best of three series. but. Are still holding on to the winning tradition set for them from nearly two decades ago. Uh, we're expecting to continue that winning tradition. I mean, last year being a part of that team and um, setting the like, SPHL record for most wins in a season, and um, that was something special. And that, obviously, we came up a bit short in playoffs, but um, we're looking to continue that tradition and um, just rack up some wins. All right, that tradition has been set in stone, really. Maybe you could say set in ice, maybe a better analogy. Within this organization, since its inception into the league back in 2004, the Ice Bears are also the only team in the history of the SPHL to make the playoffs every year since the league opened back that same year, 2004. Puck is dropping here in about 25 minutes, 7.35 tonight.